So we have this notion of soils that take up water. Why do they take up water? Why would a soil absorb water? What I want to talk about right now is capillary forces. Okay, so the capillary force of a system. So let's just start by thinking of the simplest possible capillary we could, and that's going to be a capillary tube. So I'm going to draw a little tube. And what am I going to do to this tube? Well, we're going to first off, we have to identify that it has a radius, and that's going to be equal to R. Okay. And let's put this little tube into some nice pink liquid. So I'm going to put a little pool of liquid down here. Um, so I've got my little, maybe it's a, a, a bath of liquid. And um, so the liquid starts by entering the bottom of our tube here. Okay. And this is supposed to be like a tray of liquid here. Not a particularly beautiful tray, but there you are. And so what happens is this liquid starts coming up. And what we see is that the water is really attracted to this glass tube. We'll say it's a glass tube. And so what's pulling this water up? Well, what we have is we have a surface energy the energy of that of this liquid glass interface. And then we have the energy of the of the air glass interface. Okay? And so What's really going on here is that water is very attracted to glass. And so it sticks. And that, in fact, releases energy. And where does that energy go? It goes to lift up the water. So as these molecules of water are attracted to that glass, they stick and they climb up the glass and they say, oh my gosh, I can really have a tremendous amount of energy bonding between me and the glass. And it's this difference in energy between an air contact in glass and water contact, that difference in energy is what gives rise to the force of pulling that water up. It's not free. Someone had to dry that glass out. And so to dry it, you had to take that energy and, and pull the water back off using dry air, for example. So you had to pay the price. But now, in a dry tube, the water gets pulled up. How, what is the pressure right here? What's the pressure of water behind there? Well, let's do a little bit of a force balance. What are the upward forces? The upward forces have to do with the surface tension of water. And so the upward force is going to be the force per unit length of surface, which is the surface tension, times the length over which that's operating. And that's going to be times 2 pi r. So this is the upward force. OK? The downward force is going to be the pressure, which is the force per unit area, of course, times the area, which would be pi r squared. So this is the downward force. And how are we going to solve for this pressure? We're going to say that we let this thing come to equilibrium. Now, the upward and downward forces are identical. And so we set those equal to each other. And what do we get? We get P times pi r squared is equal to 2 sigma pi over, I'm sorry, times r. OK. And now what am I going to do? I'm going to divide both sides by pi r squared. So I can get rid of that on this side. So those cancel out exactly. And here we cancel the pi out. 
and we cancel one of the R's out. And what we're left with then is the pressure is equal to 2 times the surface tension divided by the radius. And this is known as the Laplace equation. Okay. So what we find then is that this pressure gets greater as the radius gets smaller. And that's not a surprise. If we put a big pipe into a pool of water, not much water would come up. If we put a very, very thin capillary into water, it comes up a long ways. And when you think about it, what about a redwood tree or a large tree? A large tree is made up of very, very fine capillaries, so fine that they can actually pull the water up the entire height of the tree. So what we have then is our expression that says this is the capillary pressure and it's related to the radius as well as the surface tension of the water or what other liquid you have. So the greater the surface tension, the greater the capillary pressure.